What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. So we're going to talk about a few different topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Scream 6. We'll be talking about Megan 2.0. We'll be talking about a Friday the 13th reboot that apparently is in development also from Sean S. Cunningham. And then we'll round out by talking about a new member that has joined the cast of the growing cast of A Quiet Place Day 1, which is set to come out in March of next year, 2024. Just to kick it off with Scream 6, we know we got the trailer for Scream 6 yesterday. This is mostly going to just be theorizing an idea about Kirby that I've seen online pop up a lot more often and frequently these days about this wig of hers being for a costume so i've seen several posts discussing the possibility that kirby reed is in costume for a portion of this movie and that would explain her wig now given that we know a chunk of the movie will take place over halloween night presumably starting with its opening sequence then that could explain why Kirby is wearing a wig if she's trying to be like Tiffany Valentine or the Bride of Chucky, uh, which is the Bride of Chucky, not that those are two different people. <laughs> she's a horror fan after all, so that could be a fun way to explain the wig slightly if they went that route. I'll also like to point out that we know this outfit with the leather jacket isn't the only clothing we'll get to see Hayden Rock because we've seen her from behind the scenes images. So that adds to the idea that she's wearing the wig for a costume, possibly. However, her hair doesn't seem like it's going to be changing throughout this movie. I think that the wig looks fine, even if it's not for a costume. She looks great. And if she pulls it off to reveal it was part of a costume, then I guess that's a sigh of relief for some folks. But I just want to throw that out there to you guys. What do you think? Do you think she's wearing a costume to pay homage to Tiffany Valentine? Even still, could her look in general? general just be a homage to tiffany valentine do you think that's what it is uh let me know down in the comment section why or why not i think that going off of what we see in the trailer compared to the initial image that everyone had to take out of context she looks fine she looks fine the way she is and i think it's going to be something that really doesn't bother us considering that she's not going to be the main focus of the upcoming movie so i don't think we're going to have time to just sit around and constantly be distracted by her wig and i've also seen people say it looks better than casey becker's uh that of course being drew barrymore from the opening of the original screen movie and i would have to agree that it looks better just to jump into the next topic at hand megan 2.0 Megan 2.0 has been confirmed with a release date of January 2025. I'm not sure why the hell it's coming out that far, but something tells me it's a crossover that could be coming sooner rather than later. We know Allison Williams and Violet McGraw are on board to return to their roles as Gemma and Katie. I expect that what will occur to prompt Megan's return is just some company interest sparked by online sensations related to the discussion of the doll and how kids seem to want a doll like this. So this sequel could dive deep into how real world issues are ignored in favor of making a profit far too often. Now, the 2025 release has me thinking Megan 2.0 will feature Chucky in some capacity. We know Chucky season three and season four both have a chance of happening in between us even getting this sequel because we know season three is coming this year season four could come next year so who's to say that they don't try to throw in everyone's favorite good guy to take on the latest horror it girl who's to say they don't do that i'm just spitballing but we'll see if any stages are set during the upcoming seasons of chucky or even a future chucky movie because we could get a future chucky movie at this rate before we even see megan's return to the big screen i'm just really curious as to why they might have set it out this far however if it's not written yet, I kind of understand why. But the interest that Universal has in the IP suggests to me that there might be some interest in trying to set up a crossover between these two sooner rather than later. A, to propel Megan to an even higher standard to be the mainstay for killer dolls in the subgenre, while Chucky gets one final hurrah in a versus movie that he's never had before in his tenure as reigning defending champion as reigning defending champion of the killer doll subgenre if you want to look at it in that capacity those are my thoughts on megan 2.0 and why it might be set out that far just want to talk on that and let you guys know that a sequel was coming next thing we need to talk about is friday the 13th because apparently sean s cunningham isn't only working on a peacock show titled crystal lake but he has a reboot that could be on the way bloody disgusting was able to uncover this scoop learning that sean s cunningham isn't only working to get his own friday 13 reboot off, off the ground but he's also developing a reboot of a horror movie he produced back in 1985 uh which is a uh, house. So in addition, Cunningham is producing an original film titled The Night Driver, working alongside writer Jeff Lockler and director Jeremy Wise on the various upcoming projects. Now, see, here's the thing. Jeff Lockler explained how this project could end up working. He says, Sean hired me to do a rewrite of The Night Driver. And after working closely with director Jeremy Wise and him on that, we naturally got to talking about Friday the 13th and House. Jeremy and I pitched our own dream reboot of Friday the 13th with Sean's blessing to keep developing it 
with him. I do want to add that I've been misconstruing Sean for Brian Fuller. My mistake. <laughs> so Lockler then went on to say, obviously, the prequel TV series has reignited interest about a new film. So we're hoping the, the surrounding excitement will inspire both sides to come together and give us Jason on the big screen again for the first time in 14 years. But we also have a plan B for a sequel to the original we think fans will absolutely love and should avoid any legal entanglements. I can tell you this. I don't think fans are interested in seeing a sequel movie that does not have adult Jason in it. I understand that that original movie is garnered as a as a uh, fan favorite amongst fans of the series but mrs Voorhees was not the consistent slasher she's just someone who has garnered respect and people respect what that original film was just existing for what it is that's what is respected most people of the fandom i would argue would want to see jason now general audiences won't care diehard fans though they're going to be mad. They're going to be mad. I'm going to be open to it if this idea of yours can work. If they have an idea of a sequel to the original film without adult hockey mask Jason, I am a little intrigued to see how that would work. I'm also intrigued to see if uh, or what this other reboot idea is, if both parties, again, that being Sean and Victor, can come together and agree upon something that will allow Jason to come back to the big screen. So we'll get to see where this goes down in the coming future and what routes and what other updates we get. Uh, so just to round this out by talking about A Quiet Place Day 1. So Alex Wolf is the latest cast member who has joined A Quiet Place Day 1, the movie that is coming out in 2024, March next year. He's joining Lupita Nyong'o and also, I believe, a name Joseph Quinn, who was a breakout star from Netflix. Netflix's hit series Stranger Things season four this past summer. So Alex Wolf, it didn't mention who he'd be playing, not in this report anyway. It's coming from Deadline. So Alex Wolf, if many of you are familiar with him, Many of you who might be more familiar with him from this, he is, yes, one half, I believe, of the Naked Brothers Band. <laughs> but more recently, he's been in Hereditary, uh, and he was he's done some other projects recently. But I know the one people mostly know him for these days is definitely Hereditary and what he did in that movie because he was phenomenal. I cannot wait to see what he brings to the table joining this apocalyptic world. We know A Quiet Place Day 1 is going to be showing us the day one of when these creatures came. Just going to be from another angle because we know we got glimpses of this in the sequel, but instead of focusing on the Abbott family, we'll be focusing on other individuals and how they're dealing with this day one. The Abbott story is still expected to continue in a trilogy and that's not coming until like 2025, I think. But let me know what you guys think about Alex Wolf joining A Quiet Place Day 1. What do you think about the other eight updates down in the comments below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification you can never miss a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there are any movies news or reviews you would like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video